When it comes to alternative energy for cars, we've heard of things like hydrogen, ethanol, and even biofuels. But now a new contender has entered the race, quite literally, in fact. The man in our next story is matching his latest contraption up against the rest of the field. It's an SUV that runs entirely off of wood chips and a lot of patience. We're going to check and see how the chips are doing. Maybe we're just running low on chips. That could be This a, is Chip Beam. Be Not quite his real name. He and his faithful companion Larry are lost somewhere in upstate New York. I can see the wood chips in there. We're about down to here. Chip's beat up old SUV runs on the gases produced by burning wood chips. Now some people when they want to put a fire out they pour water on it. But this is bass wood. Let's say your house is on fire. <laughs> If you got a basswood log laying around, throw it in, and it goes right out. All right, here we go. We'll see if that helps any. A few more wood chips in there. Nice. Starts up every time. Chips back, burning up the road, trying to spark some interest in alternative fuels, and trying to figure out where the heck he made the wrong turn. The day started here at the rally point for the Green Grand Prix. It's a gathering of alternative fueled vehicles. Hybrids from Massachusetts. You know, if you shine it up, it actually gets better fuel economy. Honda Insights. Veggie Power Volkswagens. There's even a hydrogen powered Prius built by the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources. The rally is taking place the weekend of the Watkins Glen Indy car race. Bob Gillespie, artist, alternative fuel enthusiast, and the rally's organizer planned it during race weekend to get the most attention. There are technologies that people really don't have an occasion to find out personally about. They may read these things in the paper, you know, about uh, hybrid cars, about biofuels, grease cars, things like that, but they have no first-hand experience providing an opportunity to ask questions. I don't know what happens that radiator that goes in. What do you think? There are certainly questions about Chip Beam's wood-burning SUV. Everyone wants to know how it works. Chip mostly leaves those explanations to his buddy Larry. So we fill this with wood chips, this top barrel. We start a fire inside. There's, uh, we throttle the air, the amount of air and oxygen that goes to the fire. That creates a gas. The gas comes out of this pipe by the vacuum force of the engine or the blower, whichever we happen to be running. The gas runs through these pipes into this cooler. Additional cooling comes down this pipe into the filter. Filter's full of wood chips. Helps keep some of the moisture out, keeps some of the particles out, the ash that comes from the fire. And uh, then from there goes through the bottom of the bed, underneath the vehicle, and right up into the engine compartment. The engine ends up burning a mixture of carbon and hydrogen. It runs uh, on a regular motor, could hook up to any car. Uh, the nice thing about it, you don't need fuel injection system or carburetor of a standard type that would take, uh, say, liquid fuel and make it into a vapor. It kind of comes to the motor as a vapor already. So basically, you just hook it up to the intake manifold and use any kind of means, butterfly valve or piece of cardboard in a piece of pipe. Anything to operate the, uh, the gas flow um, is all you need. And the throttle's sticking right now, so. But after it warms up, I think we'll be all right. All right. You're in no danger. We might be on uh, engineering disasters as opposed to cool things that work. got impressive speed. You're lucky we didn't hook up the turbo booster. We decided not to do that because, well, you don't want it to be running too fast in the wood-powered car, you know. It does a lot better downhill. I bet you we go down the hill, we can get this thing right up to 55 miles an hour. The fuel gauge doesn't work because if it, if it was in the wood chips, it'd say we we're probably pretty full on wood chips there. That oil pressure light, that's usually a lot higher, so that's not a good sign there. I remember reading about, uh, this wood chip uh, car when I was younger, uh, out of the Mother Earth News magazine, and uh, I said, you know, someday if I ever move to uh, Nebraska, I think that might have been it, folks. 
Here we are. We uh, logged a couple five eight miles. She uh, shut down. Could be something simple. Might be something major. I'm guessing. So uh, we're gonna check that out next. Chip gets out of the truck and turns off the flaming fuel tank. It really flames, doesn't it? Then he and Larry try to figure out the problem with the engine. Turns out it's just a clogged filter. Well, can you blame the filter? And within 10 minutes, they're back on the road again. So I had this idea about how, making it more, how to make it more efficient is I'm going to put this big funnel on the roof, and as I'm driving, it funnels the bugs in, and then we burn them in the back. You get better gas mileage or wood chip miles when you mix the bugs with, but but I don't know how Peter would look at that, but that's what I was thinking. We could try that. We're gonna try that next time. The big bug funnel on them buggy nights. We'll just get some better power. I think that way. That's right. Chip Beam isn't done yet. His team got lost at the rally. He never even made it to the first checkpoint. The car has more problems than he can shake a stick at. And if he did all this to save money on gas, think again. We went through probably a barrel of wood chips. So, or three quarters of a barrel, I would say, is about right. Yeah, I would say 60, 70 pounds of chips, probably. And so uh, you get about a mile a pound, sort of, maybe, more or less, plus or minus, give or take. <laughs> Carry on, chipmeister. May the wood be with you. A promising technology, and we're going to burn it on out of here. Thanks for watching. I'm Dan Duran. See you next time on Discoveries This Week.